welcome back to Beyond the Trailer's look at the most anticipated films of 2014. I've got three top ten lists for you, original films, sequels, and wild cards. Here we're going to take a look at the sequels list, where the competition is fierce. Selecting a top ten was tough, so let me know in the comments down below what you think of my choices. Number ten is 300 Rise of an Empire. Sure, it's seven years after the first flick and Zack Snyder is only producing, but so far this companion film has generated a lot of fanboy buzz. I say companion film because 300 Rise of an Empire takes place before, during, and after 300. Casino Royale's Eva Green stars, as well as UK television star Sullivan Stapleton from Strike Back. The original flick was a crucial step in getting mainstream audiences to take comic book movies seriously and cemented Zack Snyder's relationship with Warner Brothers, who would ultimately hand him their DC Cinematic Universe. The studio is also releasing 300 Rise of an Empire. Will Snyder shine for them again or give them another sucker punch? But if you think seven years is a long time between movies, how about 20? Number 9 is Dumb and Dumber 2, where both the Fairley Brothers and Jim Carrey will try to recapture their former glory. This is, after all, the film that originally put all of them on the map back in 1994. Now sure, there was Dumb and Dumberer, but the Fairley Brothers weren't involved in that film. How much damage did that flop do to the brand? Only time will tell, but the first flick certainly has its fans. Jeff Daniels said that Clint Eastwood cast him in blood work because he wanted to work with his Dumb and Dumber character, Harry, while Jennifer Lawrence is reportedly such a fan that she insisted on a cameo in the sequel. And when the girl on Box Office Fire wants to be in your movie, you let her be in your movie. Now another follow-up movie that retains few of its original members is Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, number 8 here. Basically, only Andy Serkis and screenwriters Rick Jaffa and Amanda Silver have remained, but then they were the real stars of the first prequel, right? Which is good, because Dawn lacks any other real stars, as Jason Clarke and Carrie Russell take over for James Franco and Frida Pinto. Gary Oldman also co-stars, but he's not exactly reliable when it comes to picking quality material, but we love him anyway. 20th Century Fox is obviously very excited about this sci-fi flick, as they've been trying to milk the original Planet of the Apes franchise for years, yet found that the well had gone dry. And producers say they're going to try once again to earn some nominations for Circus for his incredible motion capture acting. But have audiences given up the fight? Number seven is The Amazing Spider-Man 2, which will finally break new ground as it moves beyond the overdone origin story and introduces Electro, Rhino, and Black Cat to the silver screen. Norman and Harry Osborn will be redefined, with James Franco getting replaced once again. This time by Dane DeHaan, with Chris Cooper playing Papa Goblin. While Sam Raimi's Spider-Man was one of the first comic book heroes on the scene, with today's overcrowded marketplace, there is some concern Sony can't spin its spiderweb fast enough to compete with Marvel and DC cinematic universes. Speaking of which, after doing boffo business with Iron Man 3 and Thor 2, Disney Marvel debuts another sequel in 2014. Captain America The Winter Soldier comes in at number 6. Can the success of the Avengers rub off on one of their worst performing characters? Yes, with the exception of The Incredible Hulk, the first Captain America is their lowest grossing flick to date by far. Yet a very large supporting role for Scarlett Johansson's Black Widow might help, as well as the debut of several new characters, including Anthony Mackie's Falcon and Frank Grillo's Crossbones. Plus, The Winter Soldier is one of Marvel Comics' most well-received recent storylines. And as Cap questions America's tactics, he might win over some more foreign fans in the process. Animation gets on the list with number 5, How to Train Your Dragon 2. While Disney Animation has avoided sequels and Pixar only recently embraced them, DreamWorks Animation excels here. But while Shrek, Madagascar, and Kung Fu Panda 2 can all be heralded as successes, DreamWorks Animation has a chance to take things to the next level here, as they mix in genre elements for Hiccup and Company. This is the second entry in a planned trilogy complete with its own mythology. And if animation can deliver an all-ages Lord of the Rings or Game of Thrones, imagine what could be next. Now, the reason Transformers Age of Extinction rates the number four spot is that there are so many balls in the air here, this fourth entry is sure to get people talking, good or bad. And it really is up in the air as Transformers as a franchise moviegoers love to pay to hate, raking in the dough even as it becomes a pop culture joke. But with a whole new cast spearheaded by Mark Wahlberg, plus a new look for Optimus Prime's crew and Dinobots, well, this franchise ain't extinct yet. Furthermore, Transformers Age of Extinction will heavily feature Asian talent and locations, more so than any blockbuster to date in the wake of Asia's increased box office purchase power. Also incorporating some global talent is X-Men Days of Future Past, coming in at number two. China's Bing Bing Fan and Francis Omar Sy of supporting roles, or just cameos in the film, which Fox hopes will build on the momentum of the Wolverine. 
Plus, to some degree, it's their version of the Avengers, bringing together the popular cast of First Class and the classic cast that audiences fell in love with in the first place, before Brian Singer quit. Will we accept his apology? So what do I feel is the most anticipated sequel of 2014? That choice was easy, Fast and Furious 7. Fan interest is practically at a frenzy, although now with a tragic twist due to the untimely death of Paul Walker. There's a big question mark as to how fans will react, largely dependent on how Universal handles his absence in the film. They were in the middle of production when Walker was killed in a car accident. Could that keep audiences from enjoying the film's car chase sequences? Outside of Walker's death, Universal has also brought in new talent behind the camera, James Wan. Not only does Wan come from a different genre horror, but he has little to no experience with big budgets or big action sequences. Will all these factors renew interest in the seventh installment or grind the escalating franchise to a halt? And that's my list of the top 10 sequels to look out for in 2014. As for original movies and that wildcard list, you can check out those episodes right now.